seriously. It's a mark. Look at It's a mark. So when it talks about the mark in the Bible, yep, the mark is a lot. It's like DNA mark. People didn't get the RFID chip. Now that's the beast. Now that part's the beast. Like I said, nothing is singular. It's multifaceted. So when they talk about the mark of the beast, they're probably talking about A, the social security number, B, the RFID chip, right? But they're also talking about a mark of the beast from a DNA perspective, right? Now, the fallen angels would have the mark of the beast because it's a marker, it's a DNA marker, right? So, and those who believe in Christ, right, that mark of those beasts, of those antichrist DNA people, um, those marks would be um, visible to them. They can sense them, trust me, believe me. They can feel them. It's like, kind of like having a bad allergic reaction, so to speak. So, anyway, this is what I've learned so far and stuff. And, um, well, y'all done it to yourself. We all done it to ourselves, to be honest with you. If we had just kept our act together and behaved ourselves, we wouldn't be stuck in the middle of this war between God and Lucifer. We'd be out of it. But we can't behave ourselves. We can't do what we're asked to do. You know? Oh. Now, a really interesting thing I learned today from a friend of mine. For 40 some years, him and the priests and stuff have been doing exorcisms and all this kind of thing. And he does not take money. Donations. People can donate to him. Yeah, he does it because he wanted the answers himself. And, um, well, I learned something pretty interesting from him today. And I, I actually really already knew it, but I don't really focus on the whole ghost thing too much, right? I know about spirits and souls and, you know, spirit and soul kind of thing. Only because my research into what the truth about who we are, what we are, and where we're going that's my thing so um did you know that ghosts when they die their personality who they are their makeup if they were a rapist on this earth once they die and lose their body they're still a rapist a murderer is still a murderer a sweet, kind person is still a sweet, kind person, right? Their personality traits and the way they are in this world, once they lose their body, they stay the same. And what they will do, <clears throat> the rapists and the murderers, is um, they will actually, because ghosts, which you guys need to understand this, ghosts have the ability, they run on a different electrical frequency. Humans run on electrical frequencies. Angels run on electrical frequencies. That's what I call them, electrical frequencies, right? And um, angels, fallen angels, spirits, because they all run on different electrical energy frequencies, right? You ever notice ghosts, they, um, they can tamper with electronics, right? They turn TV on and off, flip the light on and off, if they're trying to get somebody's attention, and so on and so forth. Same thing with angels and fallen angels. They have that ability, right? Um, so, they also have the ability to speak to us telepathically. And that's what a possession is, which I've talked about before. So, so if you've got a murderer or rapist, they can tamper with you with the electrical impulses in your brain and communicate with you telepathically and they can make you a rapist right because it's like a possession kind of thing so all I can tell you guys and what I've learned right and I've been under attack I'm under attack right now that damn 666 number again um 
what I can tell you is you can stop them from doing it, from changing it. And you say, well, how are you going to do that? Well, take a, a panic attack, for example. What happens in a panic attack? A panic attack, the person um, gets a thought in their head. They start panicking. They're going to die, right? Their brain gets hooked. It's like a record. The record goes round and round and round, and the needle keeps playing the same words over and over. It gets stuck. The needle gets stuck, and it keeps repeating it over and over and over again. The same words on the record, right? Same thing with pan people with panic attacks. It gets in their brain, oh, I'm going to die, 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 right? Well, then that frightens the person. So then what happens then? You get an adrenaline rush. So then the heart goes boom, 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 right? So your brain's mean meanwhile like going, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. And your heart's going boom, boom, boom. So then you think, oh my God, my heart's going to explode. It's going to quit. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Right? So that's what happens with a panic attack. Right? Because in your brain, the brain is telling you over and over, like the record, the needle's going round and round, keeps getting stuck on that same word, same song, music, words. Right? Same thing with the brain with a panic attack. So if you know the basis behind that and how to stop that, and you can stop the demons. You can stop the ghosts. You can stop them from possessing you. Okay? When you say, how are you going to do that? Well, with a panic attack, what you do is, if it's cold, go put your coat on, put your shoes on, and you go outside and you start walking. And you think, oh, I'm going to fall over, I'm going to pass out. Uh-uh. Go out walking, start looking at the trees, look at the cars. Hey! I'm talking. Shush! Um, so you go walking, you start looking at cars, you look at trees, you look at birds, you look at the sky, you look at anything that can redirect your thought patterns. So your note, so your broken record, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, gets replaced with, ooh, look at the pretty trees, ooh, look at the sky, ooh, look at that really cool car over there. Oh, I see my friend walking up the street. And you will diffuse it. Same thing with fallen angels, demons as they're called, um, ghosts, right? Because there's some naughty ghosts. Because what they're doing in life that makes them naughty, makes them naughty after death. Makes them bad after death. So, what you got to do is when those things happen and it's telling you rape, 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 kill, 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 butcher, 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 blah, blah, blah. You got to redirect your thought patterns. It's exactly what you do. So what you do to break that cycle is you break that electrical impulse connection. And the way that you do that is you stop the needle from playing the same thing over and over. So you redirect your thought patterns. And believe me, sometimes it can get extremely tough. Believe me. You put things in your head and it's like you can't get it out. You can't make it stop. But you can just have to tell you, oh, that's stupid. Oh, let me go over here and cook. Oh, you know what? Let me go over here and put on a good movie. I'm really wanting to see this movie. Or I need to go clean the doggy pen or do laundry or, you know, I think I'm going to go dancing. And if it bothers you again, redirect your thought patterns again. Go do something else. Just keep doing that. And it'll break the cycle. They can't possess you. And possess means to connect with the electrical impulses and control your thought patterns in your brain. Because all these things where you hear about people walking up walls and stuff because they're possessed, it's the human being doing it. It's because the brain is extremely powerful. The brain can make you die. The brain can scare you to death. The brain... All the emotions that you feel come from your brain, your whole thought pattern process. That's how that works. That is exactly how that works. So, so that's how you're going to fight the war. That's how you're going to change everything. That's how it's meant to be. That's the reality. And the rest of those who are chosen to fight the war, they're under attack every day, honey.
trust me. Believe me when I tell you. They're under attack every day. You know. And there are signs. But don't worry. You're in good hands. All you guys got to do is get your act together. And <clears throat> choose a side. Because you're not mature enough and responsible enough to live on this earth without God and without Satan. You got to choose one side or the other. And you got to look at things for what they really are. We wouldn't be on this earth if God hadn't used his DNA to create us. And he is our father. Two, when we screwed up, when Adam and Eve screwed up in the Garden of Eden. And we were cursed. And God took our mortality away from us. Right? So we're not immortal anymore. Um, and he sent his son to die for us. So we could live again. Only... The way they did it when Jesus died is these human bodies didn't become immortal anymore because God changed them. Um, so the only way for him to fix that was for Jesus to die and then be resurrected after three days. Remember, he came back, but he was transformed. He was changed. That's how they fixed the curse that Adam and Eve um, created for us back in the days of the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve in Genesis, right? So, that's a good God. That's a kind God. Now, is he a strict God? Yeah, he's a strict parent. Is he a just parent? Oh, yeah, just God. Absolutely. So, you got to look at all that stuff, right? you got to figure out... <clears throat> if you have a choice, let me see. I think I'll go hang out with the murderers and the rapists and the crooks. Or, I think I'm going to hang out with the people that are kind and loving and helpful you know, and they're good people. Which one are you going to choose? You had, let's say, a softball game. And you had a team that was nasty. They would cheat. They would physically be harmful. You know, um, just a mean team, so to speak. And you had a team that was all about the sport. You know about the love of the sport and the, and the, what a great time you're having and you're getting exercise and you're doing all these wonderful things which one are you going to choose which one are you gonna choose the one that cheats and lies and is harmful to people physically you know and hits people with balls bats whatever or are you going to be on the team where they play the right way and you know they enjoy themselves they have a lot of fun and everybody has a good interaction and a good experience together which team are you going to play on you tell me. Which one do you want to play on? Me? I don't give a damn how much Satan wants me on his team. And I don't care what he keeps doing to me. Seriously. I'm not playing on his team. I don't need to be on his team. I want to go to where God is. Because let me tell you. It could be a lot worse than singing and praising God. And having every want, need, and desire I've ever wanted or had in my life to be just there for me, you know. And for me to be able to feel safe and loved and respected, you know. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer, guys. Because none of us, none of us human beings are mature enough to choose to be on our own. Without a God or without Satan. You do understand that, right? Until humanity learns that war, rape, murder, extortion, all those things out there are not worth it. Until they learn to live in harmony with each other. We need a dad. We need a father. We need parents because we're still babies. We still don't know right from wrong. That's just the bottom line. And for the ones who do know right from wrong, well, go join Satan's teams. Knock yourself out, because believe me, when you're frying in hell for an eternity, I think you'll be rethinking what you did. So anyway, that's what I can tell you. I'm trying to bring you up to speed, catch everybody up, because it is the end times. The warriors have been awakened now. Or activated as I call it and we are it's time 